Usually when one talks about stretch and strain, we think about stretching uh, line segments or straining line segments, but it's also possible to talk about volume stretch and volume strain. So we think about having a body and we look at, say, material points uh, in the body and we look at volumes of material around those material points and then we look to see how that volume changes of those exact same material points in the neighborhood of the point of interest and then we take the ratio that would be the stretch and subtracting from one would give us the volume strain. So I'd like to go ahead and go through that construction here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a material point capital X and I'm going to construct three non-coplanar vectors A, B, and C about that point. So these think of these as small vectors near the point X and we can think of those as vectors of uh, the edges of a parallel of pipe head. So they they actually define a volume around the point capital X. After deformation, the point will move to a new location. So that new location will be uh, little x. And the vectors will also transport from the reference body to the deformed body. And the vector A will become FA, the vector B will become FB, and the vector C will become FC. And those are the edges of the, of the original parallel pipette. And so we can look at the volume now defined by the parallel pipette spanned by FA, FB, and FC. So let's start with the volume that we began with. So that would be the scalar triple product of A, B, and C. So A dotted with B cross C which is often written just simply using the square bracket notation here for scalar triple product. And after deformation, we'll have the scalar triple product of FA, FB, and FC. The volume stretch itself is just defined as the ratio of these two volumes. So lambda vol is dv divided by dvr. So it's, this is not a derivative here, this is just simply the ratio of these two quantities. We can plug in our expressions for dv and dvr. So we have the ratios of the scalar triple products. And if you recall, this, is, this expression appeared before, it appears in the definition of the determinant. In fact, this is just simply the definition of the determinant of the tensor f. So, and we often use the symbol J to, to denote det F, and J is known as the Jacobian determinant. So you've probably heard that uh, phrase before in vector calculus, and it's actually, there, there's an intimate relationship. I won't go through the details of it. We'll just take it as nomenclature right now. So if I want to figure out what the volumetric stretch is of the material, and I know what the deformation map is, I can calculate the deformation gradient, and then I can take its determinant. And so that can vary from point to point in the body. If I'm interested in the strain, well, I just, just subtract one from lambda vol, and that'll give me the volumetric strain. So J minus one is the volumetric strain, and we often use the symbol E to denote volumetric strain. So you have to be a little bit careful because we use E for basis vectors, and then we also use it as the permutation symbol. But uh, one can always, or usually can tell from context, which E that we're talking about. So in this case here, E is J minus 1, and so that is the volume strain.